My name is Hampley III, and I am a Chief Master Sergeant in E9 in the United States Air Force. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about bullet riding, but bullet riding also goes over career management because by the time you sit down and say, hey, I'm about to write my EPR or 1206, some type of war statement decoration, if you haven't already kind of did a little bit of career mapping, it's probably a little bit too late because the, the process for writing a bullet begins way before you sit down at the table or at your computer to start hand jamming your EPR and a 1206. And so what I want to do is take time to talk about a book that I wrote and go through it uh, on a book called Stripes. And so Stripes is a book that I provide on my website, spiritualcombatants.com. If you go to the books link, you can, it's probably at the bottom of the page. And so you can click on the image and you can download a free PDF. And if you like, you can also purchase a hard copy or an ebook as well. So one of the great things I like about the book is we're going to go over like the beginning from like the AFI and kind of move you into the uh, career mapping, the kind of how to build like certain goals and then going into like the detailed process for writing EPR from the duty description all the way to both the Air Force Form 910, also the 911. And so what's different about both of these, what's, what's going to be a little bit different than though the videos that I give or the presentations I provide in person is that I do not provide my personal examples. So if you see me and you're somewhere and I'm teaching this course, then I typically give my own personal examples, my career map, as well as sharing my 2015 EPR when I was a senior master sergeant, when I was going up to the board for, to make, um, for chief master sergeant and where I made chief master sergeant. So I normally provide that that uh, EPR on there in my briefings, but I won't do that here. So before I continue, just as a disclaimer, I am not, this is not like a rep, I'm not representing the Air Force in my message that I'm giving here. And this is probably going to be maybe a four or five part series. And so I'm just going to talk about a couple chapters today, but all these views are just my own. This is me just wanting to share with you how about career management and bullet riding. I know that many people struggle with that. And so as a chief, I believe every airman is my airman. And so I want to take this opportunity as I'm, I've been in the military at the, at the time of this videotaping for 23 years, so I only have a little bit wild, a little bit more to go. But however long, whether that's another year or so, or even another six, you know, close to seven, then I want to make sure that I'm providing with you all the resources that I have to help you succeed in your career, whatever that may be. It may not be being a chief master sergeant. It may be whatever your career goals are in the in the United States Air Force. I want to help you do that, and hopefully this will be the the uh, video series to help you do that because the EPR is one of the most important documents in our military career because largely it will depend on what's going to be on our final document that DD-214, DD-214. And so the, largely the, what we have in our EPR is going to determine what rank there is going to be on that form. And so yes, there are some other things that we have to do, but largely the EPR has a great, has some great weight on that. And so I want to just help you write great reports based on the things that you're doing. So Let's get into this. So let me give you a quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about. So then you see the slide here. I'm just going to kind of go back from slide to me, slide to me, slide to me. So here I'm talking about the enlisted evaluation system, going over career mapping, uh, building a word picture, which is extremely important, bullet element, elements, and also a detailed uh, EPR review. So in this video series, I'm just going to go over the first two, the, the enlisted evaluation system, as well as the career map. So that's just part one. And then as we continue, with the Military Monday series. Lord willing, you know, I can continue on and go back to back to back each week. But if not, I'll try to make sure I, I do it very um, within a short amount of time so there's not a large gap in between each video. So I want to be able to get the content out to you to be able to help you in your career right where you are. So let's get into the first one. So in the enlisted evaluation system, you know, it's really important for uh, supervise, that supervisor and airman relationship, that the subordinate relationship is, is critical to this whole entire process. You're talking about as soon as you walk into a unit to where you get each EPR annually, the awards, decorations, all of that matters. I and mean, it really matters for you to be able to, for as a supervisor to understand that and then also know what, what the AFI may be speaking about for what to expect from a supervisor. So. 
there's three basic things in AFI 36-2406 uh, that you will have as far as for the enlisted evaluation system. So the first one is performance. And so it talks about like establishing the, the performance standards, uh, meaningful feedback, direction on how to meet, established standards. You got this long-term record. So you think about when someone, you think about someone that retires, you know, they're standing there or the, the uh, providing, presiding official is talking about their career. They're going over their EPR. And so it's this long-term record that shows what, and it says right, right in the AFI, it talks about, uh, it talks about the promotion potential and other personal ma personal personnel management decisions based on that performance. So if you want to get go for a special job or there's like maybe a special assignment on base, first thing to ask you, let me see three, your last three EPRs, last five EPRs. If you want to get a special duty, same thing, provide me with your EPRs. If you're going up for a promotion board, same thing, EPRs are heavily looked at. So it's really important that you write down the right information down there and we're going to get into that. And so lastly, you want to make sure that you have sound information because those, that EPR is going to make personnel management decisions, as, as I talked about. Whether or not someone's going to get a certain position, somebody's get promoted, somebody may be going to some other special opportunity that may be out there. So the EPR matters. And so this is where the supervisor's role is in there to have this adequate understanding about what they should be looking for. And so there's several things that supervisors should be looking for within an airman's career. Number one is job performance. And so you want to know, hey, and that's kind of what we're all kind of the generic one. I need you to do A, B, and C, or this is the mission that's required of you. And so this is what I'm looking for. But it's not just about job performance, because you know if Airman Snuffy is doing really well or if he's not, but it's also the quality of what Airman Snuffy may be doing. And so you're looking at, okay, compared to, yeah, I, I want you to change this tire, or I want you to process this paper, but then you're also looking at the quality that this that this uh, Airman Snuffy may be doing it in. And then also you're talking, the supervisor also has the development of skills uh, and abilities. And so I'm looking to, how can I help this Airman develop more fully? Maybe they're lacking a certain area or you see some potential somewhere. So what opportunities, resources, and training uh, can I provide him or her to help him or her grow in their position, not only just in the unit, but also maybe uh, in the future further along as you're looking as they're going down the road and they may PCS and go somewhere else. And then also providing opportunities for them. So there may be some opportunities. Everything doesn't cost money. There may be some things locally. There may be some things on the base, some things that you may be able to provide for them to help grow them and to develop them professionally and personally. So you want to make sure you're looking out for that. And so all of this can be found in several different places, but in AFI 36, um, 36, 26, 18, in the enlisted force structure, the, it tells you exactly what's expected for each enlisted tier. And so there's no there's no hidden language there. You'll you'll know. And we can read that like, okay, what's required of you? And so what I've always looked at when I was coming through, I wanted to know, okay, this is what requ what's required of me, but I'm also looking at the next rank or the next tier, depending on what my rank was, because I want to see, I want to make sure that I'm doing the things of the next grade. Because if I'm doing those things, when it comes down to write my report, then it's I'm already doing the things of, of a master sergeant or a senior master sergeant or chief. I'm already doing those things. So then my EPR shows that I'm ready for the next promotion opportunity because I've been working in that area already. And so that's really important. And so that's something that we all can look at. So also in performance feedback, if you look in the performance feedback in the ACA, there's tons of information that tells you exactly what type of airman is the, you know, the absolute best that exceeds all standards. And that, that's all the way over to the right. And it tells you exactly where, where you can be at if we just take the time to read that small print that's on the form. And then also the enlisted performance report. Again, very small print that tells you exactly what to put on there at specific times. Because most of us, like on the on the 910, we typically put like at the top we have duty performance. In the middle we put education and um, maybe whatever training. And at the bottom we put volunteer stuff without even looking at what each section says should be in there. But that's our typically our typical flow. But when I get into it, I'll, I'll go over just briefly as we get to that part. Then we'll talk about the EPR and. We'll 
what's on there. So take some time to look at, to read like for your rank and for your tier and even the next tier in, the, in uh, 36, 26, 18, check out what's in there. Look at what's in the ACA, what they're looking, what type of airman what, that, that, that exceeds the standard. And then you want to see what, what, the, uh, what the EPR says and read your EPR and say, look at all the sections and all this fine print. It's telling you exactly what they're looking for. So there's nothing that's hidden to some of us, including me. So I, I was at fault at the head of two at one time. I wasn't looking at the small print. I was just kind of just pasting different bullets and different, wherever I thought they should be, then really taking some time to look at what each section is saying and how I mapped that out. So we'll get into that. All right. So in, in chapter, in section two, or for chapter in chapter two in the book, I talk about career mapping. And so career mapping is, is, is hard for a lot of us because we don't always think about kind of our point B. We may have like some, some desires of, of where we want to go, but we really don't sit down to really say, maybe I want to be a chief master sergeant, or I want to be an officer, or I want to be this, or I would love to have this job, or sometimes we think more in the lines of I want this assignment, maybe because my boo's there, and I want to be with my boo, but we're not always considering like kind of like that final point B or where I'm at. And so this is where I go over like the point B, like separation or retirement. What does your last day in the United States Air Force look like? What does what badges do you what 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 ribbons do you have? The decorations they say you've been overseas. Maybe you won a yearly award. What do they say? What's the what do, what stripes and chevrons do you have on on your service dress when you when you leave the service on that last day? What does your uniform look like? And so sometimes we don't always share. And I was I may have been a, a master sergeant, yeah, a tech sergeant, but maybe I think I had lined up for master before I even thought like, well, what's my point B gonna look like? I didn't think that I could ever be a chief master started in the Air Force, it seemed like it was too far-fetched and too far out there for me. And so I really didn't think that maybe I could make, I can I can be promoted to Chief Master Sergeant until I was a Senior Master Sergeant. I was a Senior Master Sergeant First Sergeant. I was like, well, I think I can make it now. And so I kind of started planning, but I didn't have that long-range goal. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having goals and trying to shoot for those. Was, we are serving our country, and a, a lot of people want to want to do well. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, I would like to have this certain position, or, or I want to reached a certain um, rank or, or what have you, because some people want to outrank their parents. They're, they're like the second, third generation military. And they're like, look, if I can just out, outrank my, my dad or my mom, I'm good to go. Or maybe I just want to be a senior NCO. I make master sergeant good to go. Or some people are like, look, 20 in a day, whatever rank I'm at, at that time, I'm done. And so people have different goals and desires, and it's okay. Everybody's serving their country, and let's continue to serve well. But I just want you to take some time to think about your point B. All right, so also in your career mapping, you always need to think about PME and training. So whenever you get to your next base, whatever rank you're at, whatever rank you're about to put on, if you get promoted, then you want to think about what are the PME requirements. And so whatever training I need to have, if, I, if for PME requirements, you try to get them PME requirements done ASAP, as soon as you possibly can. Like when I when I had a line number for uh, promotion to Master Sergeant, the day that I was, I was notified for promotion at nine o'clock, I was down at the education office signing up for my course 14. I was like, hey, I'm here, I got promoted, here's the paperwork, you know, sign me up now. I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. And so what I didn't realize was like I got promoted and then probably about four months after I was promoted, my, my supervisor was departing. And so he said, hey, you're eligible for an EPR. And I'm thinking like, how am I eligible for an EPR? This was like in November. And I'm like, how am I eligible? And so it's like, I just had it on. And so they did the math and I was, I was eligible. And they asked me, so did I finish my, did I have my CCF? I was like, yes, I have my CCF. And they said, hey, do you have your course 14 done? Yes, I do. You know, and then sure enough, but because I had it all done, I competed for a senior rate endorsement, and then I was strat uh, stratified as number three of, of all the master sergeants that I, just that year, just I just showed up to the base and just doing some some uh, some great things. Someone recognized that, and so I was stratified my first time out of my EPR when I was eligible for promotion. Well, I was eligible as a master sergeant uh, for senior rate endorsement, and so you always want you you know yes, the system is a little bit different now, but you want to make sure that you complete your your PME and training as soon as you possibly can. And I'll get into this because when you do, that will build your word picture. We'll get into that in another section, but that's really important. And so also, whenever, as far as your, your career mapping, you want to look at all of your work center training requirements, 
whatever you have for the job as well, whatever certifications you need, again, as quick as you possibly can because it all shows and all builds up your character and that name because we all have two family names on our uniform. So you want to make sure that you're doing both of them proud. So just go in, hey, what job? what's my job? Let me get in here, figure it out. So I want to be able to hit the ground running and so that I can be a, you know, you can contribute to the mission or whatever that may be for you, wherever you may be assigned. And so... The third thing is the big rocks. And so big rocks, I always think about when you get to a base and then also when you're in a specific enlisted tier or rank. And so when I go to a base, and so this is what I did in my last base, I was uh, I had a line number for, well, not my last, the last base before I made Chief Master Sergeant. You know, I was, I was going in as a, senior, as a senior Master Sergeant, I had a line number, and I was going to be a First Sergeant. And so then I said, okay, I had these like three specific goals. For me, like these big rocks, I thought like, okay, if I do these three big things, then I believe that I, I have a chance to make Chief Master or at least to have like the promotion consideration I think I should do very well. But, you know, but there's a lot of other things that go along with that, but that was over a three year period. I just had three goals. I'm not one that Brown knows. I like to just let my work do the talking, but I knew it was going to take a lot and I was going to really have to stretch myself. Even being a first sergeant for me, I'm an introverted person. And so being a first sergeant was a huge stretch for me, but I really wanted that experience in my career. And so I took that time and I mapped out my career. So I had these big rocks. So whatever big rocks you have, like when you hit a base, some people I talk to as soon as they hit a base, if they have a line number, I'm like, if you're going to be here four years, you should have the next rank on annual award, maybe even go for executive executive council position, you know, and then whatever is in your functional community, maybe reaching out to them. So typically I kind of stick around those rounds, those areas, maybe doing something significant in your, in your local community. You don't have to be everywhere doing everything. You just want to set like some clear and deliberate goals. And then how you map that out for each year, one year, you may do one thing. And then the next year you may do something different. And I'll kind of, I go over that a little bit in my book. So, and the next one, and for number four is the little rocks. And so little rocks are like the breadth of knowledge and experience, personal and professional education, and then unit based and community involvement and then awards. And so when you talk about breadth of knowledge and experience, this may be, this goes against uh, some, a lot of enlisted members, not all enlisted members, but a lot of us base our, you know, our assignments where we want to go. I want to go, like I said, I want to go to Florida. I want to go to Germany because I want to do a boo. I want this experience. And then we'll sit in a job. Some of us can rotate around in different jobs. Some of us can't, but that's why we need to, as much as we can, sometimes we can't control that because the needs of the Air Force come first, but where we can to rotate to a job. Like for me, I don't think I've ever been in any job more than two years. And then any base or any situation, any base. So I have been at some bases longer than three years, but I'm typically rotating every couple years. And when I was doing that, I was just doing it because my personality type is like after after about a year, year and a half, I, you know, I start to get a little bit complacent. I'm like, OK, look, I can feel complacently coming on. I need to do something different. I just need to see something different. And then I'll just be re-energized again. And I'm going out trying to fix things, process and product improvement. And typically what I try to do is leave my office better than what I found it and help everybody. And so that's been my, my formula for success. I break it down a little bit differently in the book, but, but from staff sergeant all the way to chief, that's, those are only two things that I've tried to do. And so when I get to a place where I've got as far as I could, I'm like, let me go somewhere else. But I didn't realize that that was building my breadth of knowledge experience. So then when you become tech sergeant, math sergeant, you have all this knowledge. So all the knowledge you have begins to come back together as you begin to uh, lead other airmen, your supervisor, NCIC, superintendent, then all those things come to bear and then you can be a great asset to your unit as you as they are trying to uh, to accomplish the mission that's that's before them. So then in professional and personal education, uh, you always want to continue to build yourself, continue to be a lifelong learner, not just in the Air Force, but also uh, education wise, go as far as, you know, as you can in education. All those just open up other opportunities for you in the military, also uh, beyond. The Air Force is not forever. And so I'm not saying that you should just, you know, uh, you know, throw aside all your military dues, focus on what you're doing when you retire or separate, but you want to make sure that you're evenly balanced and so that you're prepared for life when that time comes to make your transition. Transition. And some people are a little bit more heavier than others, but you always want to continue to invest in yourself. And so for me, I got my, my bachelor's degree probably around my 10 year mark. 
And it's been like a huge asset for me because it's in my career field. So it helped me greatly in being able to provide a greater level of support to my superiors. And so also in, in helping them complete their mission. I'm in, I'm in administration. So it really helped me in my position. So make sure that you're doing those things as well. Unit base and community involvement. Like I said before, I don't think you need to be everywhere, but you should be doing a little bit a little bit of everywhere. So like I said, like maybe one year you're in the Booster Club vice president, and then maybe I'm just helping out in the in the five six council, and then I'm, I'm pet, petting puppies over here at the local at the local kennel. And then I may switch it up. So the next year I may just be helping out in the unit, but now I went for an executive council position, maybe the secretary in the five six, and then maybe I'm leading something else, or maybe doing the same thing. I like petting puppies, so I'll keep petting them, but maybe I'm doing something at, at a grander a grander level. Then again, I may in that third year that I'm at the base, then I switch it up a little bit more. Maybe I'm doing another type of volunteering, may maybe I'm in another private org leading it, or maybe I'm the vice president or the president now of the five, six, and then maybe I'm leading large org organizations in my um, local community. So as you can tell, that was three different years where I was doing three different things. I was doing different things. I'm not everywhere. I was kind of balanced. You don't, you don't burn yourself out. You can be balanced and still have a great career and really write a great report. But a lot of that is garbage in, garbage out. If we're not doing anything and planning that career mapping it, then we don't have a chance to really think about really uh, deliberate how we're developing on ourselves and then also how we're writing our message. So that's really important as well. And so then you want to review your career map. Typically, I review my career map several times in a year. I'll do it quarterly. I'll do it after each evaluation period, maybe January 1st, and then also before I reach a base. And then you also want to have some good feedback as well. You know, some other people that you look up to, other mentors that can say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about my career map. And this is people that you can talk to freely without them kind of looking sideways at you because you say you want to be a chief and you're a senior airman and, and some people think that oh you just want to all be about yourself like no I don't want to be about myself I want to do a good job I want to serve my country well I want to support my airmen and do a great job but this is just my my goal so you want to have a place that you can speak to people freely but you want to make sure that that you're reviewing it with someone because they can help you see things that maybe you don't so, um, as I said, uh, take some time to review my book. Go to uh, spiritualcommands.com. You can download a free PDF. And that's what I have for part one. So if you have any questions or comments, just hit me up on the comment section. Shoot me an email, and I'll make sure that I have some. I take the time to respond to you. And then join me. Make sure you download the book. But join me for my second part where I begin to talk about building a great word picture. And I'll just continue to add on what I have from this uh, lesson that we just taught today. So. Until the next time, um, I'll, I'll see you next time. I uh, pray that God will bless you. God bless.